good morning uh, or afternoon to wherever you are in the country or the world. Um, as a reminder, you can ask questions throughout the webinar. On the bottom of the screen, there's a Q&A button. Please put your questions in there. Uh, we may take you on screen so you can ask the question live if you prefer. Um, and if not, totally fine. There will be a chance for questions and answers at the end. Uh, stick around. We have a, a few questions for you all uh, if you want some, some good information there. For those of you who don't know me, my name's Katie. I'm the manager of member services for the Green Sports Alliance. And we're going to start today by giving you a little history of Green Sports Day. So sound on, everyone. And the Pens have been leaders in the Green Sports Alliance, making their facilities more energy and water efficient, lowering their carbon footprint as they travel. I want to thank Commissioner Bettman and the entire NHL for leading the way in environmentally sustainable sports because we want to continue to have ice so that we can play hockey. So in 2016, we had President Obama recognize Green Sports Day on October 6th as a day where we can recognize what sports are doing in sustainability, whether it's actionable items, things that they've done in the past, et cetera. So in 2022, oh, there we go. Um, we asked venues to simply just light green. Um, if you've noticed, there are different colors that venues light their stadiums, whether it's their own team colors or purple is for mental health awareness. Uh, our color, which might be obvious, is green. So this is to recognize what stadiums are doing in sustainability uh, and mostly just to spread awareness that, um, you know, this is our mission and, and some of our goals. So. We had a uh, 14 million reach in 2022. We got about 120 partners to join us that day. And then in 2023, we wanted to take it a little bit further. We asked folks to hold a campaign, uh, start an initiatives, have an event, so that people could do some more actionable items. Uh, and in 2023, we reached 22 million and we had about 170 uh, partners. And throughout the world, we had 14 countries represented. And I'm going to pass it to Brianna to talk about what we're going to do in 2024. Yeah, we're really excited about the growth between 2022 and 2023. And we hope to do the same this year. If you go to the next slide, Katie. So this year for Green Sports Day, we do have a bit of a purpose statement to direct us. Uh, and the main things here are that this day aims to inspire organizations, athletes, fans, and communities to join us in committing to more sustainable practices in athletics and to raise awareness about the impact that sports can have on our planet. To celebrate Green Sports Day, we encourage everyone to do your part to lead eco-friendly initiatives and sporting events, reduce the environmental footprint of your activities, and foster a culture of sustainability. The through line this year and the main messaging is climate action is a team sport. Uh, and together, we can create a more positive impact on the environment and ensure a greener future. If you click to the next slide. Uh, our three pillars this year are impact community, demonstrate leadership, and inspire action. And Katie, if you click to the next one, we'll go a little deeper into it. Uh, for impact community, we're inviting you to celebrate a longstanding community impact event series or initiative around Green Sports Day. The primary focus is on a lasting impact and continued involvement with local groups. So whether this is a new partnership or previous partnership, we'd love for you to use this day as an opportunity to celebrate. Now to the next one, please. Uh, demonstrating leadership. The, this is an opportunity to highlight work that shows you or your organization at the top of your game with sustainability in the sports sphere. So while the war work doesn't necessarily have to be award-winning to be included here, certainly feel free to highlight any awards that you have. And finally, inspire action. Uh, we're encouraging participants to use your platforms to get more organizations and people involved. We want you to uplift unifying calls for collective action. It could be a joint pledge or a request for your fans to take action. We'd love to see it highlighted on Green Sports Day, on your website, social media, et cetera. 
And of course, we'd love for you to share this content with us, uh, videos and images, voiceovers, testimonials, and please, please, please make sure you tag us. We would love to repost uh, and help get the word out there. And then finally, uh, a shout out to our partners over at Composed who are putting together some great graphics. Our media kit is in the works. Um, we're expected to release that by the end of September. Um, one thing that we're asking you to do in the vein of climate action as a team sport this year, we've gotten a lot of feedback from players and player groups that they would love to be more involved and better informed of the sustainability initiatives in their own arenas. So please take the main messaging this year to heart. Climate action is a team sport and we can't do this in a silo. Please share your Green Sports Day highlights within your organization. Even better, we hope that you'll take this as an opportunity to initiate broader conversations within your orgs, to involve your athletes in these initiatives, and receive their feedback throughout the year, not just on Green Sports Day. And finally, we're getting into our panelists. So we have Evan Raskin, the National Campaign Manager at Earth Day, Hillary Meyer, our SVP of Impact at Athletes Unlimited, Jill Ora, Sustainability and Impact at Canada Games, uh, and Jenna DiPaolo, our Chief Communications Officer over at Ocean Conservancy. So you want to transition, and then Hillary will turn it over to you first. All right. Hi, everyone. Um, I am Hillary Meyer. I work for a company called Athletes Unlimited. We run four different women's professional sports leagues. The sports that we operate are softball, lacrosse, volleyball, and basketball. Um, this Green Sports Day, as with last year, we have the opportunity to highlight on a game day. Our volleyball season will just be kicking off um, in the Phoenix area of Arizona. And so I'm going to walk through with you a few of the things that um, we did last year and that we'll be looking to replicate this year. Go ahead, next slide. So last year we... Um, oh. One slide back, please. Um, I mean, I could talk about this slide. Are we able to go one slide back? Yeah, there we go. Nope. Okay, one, one more forward. <laughs> Jumpy. Um, the the first thing that we we do because it's a game day, we're able to um have game ball presentations, and which means that. With game ball presentations, we get to talk about who's presenting the game ball and why. And so um, over last year, we had the great honor of having Roger McClendon be at our game. Um, his daughter uh, last year and, and for years past um, was a professional volleyball player and she played in our league. And um, this year she's retired, um, but this year, but um, we have invited Roger. I don't know if he'll be able to make it, but Roger was able to represent the green sports Alliance at our green sports day, which was really exciting. And then over on the right, we have a community group, the Arizona sustainability Alliance, who we had paired up with on a community event and they did the game ball. So this year, Arizona sustainability Alliance will also be doing game ball presentation. And we have a fan giveaway in the middle, which is our um, reusable straws. Um, so that's another opportunity to talk to our fans, give them something tangible to talk about sustainability in the sports world. Um, next slide. This year, we launched a um, partnership with uh, a company called Refried, who some of you may know. They were actually profiled at the Green Sports Alliance Conference this past summer. Um, we are going to, so we have we have a merch line now with with um, Refried, and we will be promoting that both in stadium and online as part of Green Sports Day. So. Um, they upcycle our materials and make these beautiful bags and they've been very popular so far. And so um, we'll have an, a, a plus up on this this year with that. Next slide. Um, next slide. This is these are some pictures from our last um, our last year's community impact event. We had athletes go out and do a park cleanup with the Arizona Sustainability Alliance. That's a bunch of our pros out there. They were out there at six in the morning doing um, some uh, removal of um, of harmful weeds in a park and um, things like that. And so we'll be profiling their work uh, this year. They did it last year, but we'll be profiling their work there to, again, fan awareness um, and social opportunities. 
Next slide. Um, this is uh, a post that we put up last year. We did light our stadium inside up with green um, and we'll be similarly taking an opportunity on social to be profiling green sports day and sustainability work, our sustainability work in general. I think that concludes my remarks, Katie. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you, Hillary. Uh, much appreciated. So uh, Hillary has to run. She's a busy woman. Um, we have one question. Uh, James is his name. Um, they said that they went to a volleyball game of yours last year and they would like to get involved. So um, they're wondering how they can help as an organization. I will send you, uh, Hillary, their contact information afterwards. So James, uh, look out for an email from me. I'll let you know, uh, or I'll connect you with Hillary after this. And we'll pass it to, thank you, Hillary, so much for being here with us. Um, feel free to stay on as long as you can, but uh, I will pass it to Jill with the Green Sports Day of Canada. Awesome. Thanks, Katie. Uh, Hillary, I just love everything that you're doing. And I feel like I'm like, we're going to take everything that you're doing. We're going to try to do it up here in Canada. So thanks for sharing and thanks for giving some inspiration. Uh, hello, everyone. And thanks so much for having me today. I'm really excited to be here. Um, I think that my part of the presentation is a little bit more unique. Uh, I come to this conversation being the project manager for a volunteer alliance that has been created up in Canada to help support Green Sports Day and the dissemination of sustainability in sport from the Canadian market. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the history of Green Sports Day from Canada uh, and then talk a little bit about our goals, sort of what we have planned for this year and then how others can get involved in the conversation and very much open to hearing from this community. If there's thoughts, feelings, anything that comes up, please uh, throw a question in that Q&A uh, chat function and I'm really happy to engage in a further conversation. So next slide, please. So the history of Green Sports Day Canada sort of came on, I would say, the tail of the 2016 announcement by the GSA and President Obama that Katie spoke to earlier in this webinar session. And we sort of set up in Canada, well, that's awesome that they're doing this great work in the States, but how can we make this tangible for the Canadian market? So in the fall of 2020, yes, 2020, an open letter was written and signed by a hundred and over 125 sports people across Canada, uh, recognizing the importance of sustainability in sport and really hoping to encourage the government of Canada to recognize this really important day and to make sure that this was the national recognition across Canada. Now, of course, it was 2020, so there were a lot of barriers that were faced to get this through, um, but it really demonstrated this want and this desire in the Canadian market to recognize this day and to work really closely in collaboration with the GSA and our cross-border uh, family and friends <laughs> to make sure that we were highlighting this day and, and this really important topic. So I do want to say that although Green Sports Day Canada is, I would say, um, within, but as a Canadian focused initiative, it is very much tied into what the GSA is doing. We could not do what we're doing without the GSA. And we're really, really proud of this unique cross-border collaboration that we've created through this in initiative. So I would encourage everybody listening on the call to sort of think outside the box, um, think about partners that you could engage in these conversations and think about ways in which you can, you know, support each other to get your messaging across. One thing I will say is that we work really closely with the GSA and we never try to duplicate efforts. So I'm on this call today because we don't need to host a pre-Green Sports Day webinar in Canada. The GSA is doing that right now for us. So how are we making sure that we're not duplicating efforts, but really uh, collaborating as much as humanly possible in this in this space? The other piece I'll say is that we do have government support, although it's not at the level um, that Green Sports Day in the U.S. was able to get. We do have support from both our provincial and territorial governments, as well as our federal governments. And I'll talk a little bit more about that unique uh, support that we're receiving across Canada in a little bit here. And then I will also say this is an entirely volunteer run coalition. So we, we have 12 members who have put up their hands. These members are Olympic athletes 
ex Olympic athletes, university professors, um, those working in the sports space, those not working in the sports space, but want to help contribute to this cause. And so we have 12 really solid coalition members and then a number of volunteers who have come to the table to say, how can we advance some of the conversations in Canada? So I will say that it feels like a lot, but this is very much a volunteer run, uh, I would say, initiative. And so I do very much encourage if there's people out there that want to get involved or want to start something, we've somehow managed to do it. I would just engage your community and, and do your best with the, the volunteers that want to put their hand up for this. Uh, moving on to the next slide, please. So we have three very specific goals for Green Sports Day Canada. And, you know, it's nice to hear from Brianna talking about the goals for 2024, because I do think that they tie very nicely into what's been outlined by the GSA. But our goals are really to accelerate a conversation. How do we bring more people um, to the table? How do we make sure those conversations are going into every kind of sport avenue that they can in Canada? We want to educate the Canadian sport community. So we've had a lot of um, our community members sort of say, you know, I'm really interested in sustainability, but I have no idea how to start. So last year we hosted a summit session that was very, very tangible and specific to how to get started in your sustainability journey. So really making sure that there's an education piece throughout. I'll talk a little bit more about the education piece when we go into the details of the agenda for this year. Um, but then we're also looking to celebrate the work that we're seeing across Canada. So highlighting those organizations that are doing really great work in the space and encouraging others to look at them um, as best practices or as sort of North Stars in order to advance their own sustainability journey. Um, so with all this in mind, thanks for moving to the next slide. Um, we have been hosting Green Sports Day Canada since about 2021. The session or Green Sports Day Canada has taken different forms over the years, but one piece that has remained very consistent throughout is that we host a virtual summit. So we bring our sports uh, community together for a half day, couple hours, kind of depends on the format and depends on the year to talk about sustainability in sports. However, <laughs> last year we did this. It was a great success. We, I think we tripled the numbers of attendance and we were over the moon, very excited. But we did actually get challenged by Lou from Eco Athletes, who I'm sure many of you on the call know, to go bigger, to take 2024 and to say, let's blow this out of the water. Let's go as big as we can and bring as many voices to the table as possible. So what we did decide to do this year is we're actually hosting a week long celebration with a number of different events taking place throughout the week. And I'm just going to go through some of the um, high level of the ones that are taking place. And I would, again, just encourage this um, idea came to us, obviously, from the challenge from Lou. But we also wanted to make sure that we were bringing those who are experts in their area to the table. There was no need for us to reinvent the wheel about how to engage e athletes in this conversation. Lou is doing that really well with eco-athletes. So how do we give eco-athletes a platform? We have another session that I actually haven't outlined here, but um, it has just recently been confirmed, but we're having conversations around engaging with the Indigenous community in Canada. So we don't necessarily need to identify how to do that. We have an organization up here called the Aboriginal Sports Circle. So how do we engage with them and give them a platform to talk to the greater community? And this is really um, a true example of that collaborative piece. So really high level here, but I'm hoping that these can spark some, you know, conversations and, and maybe some ideas through through this webinar of, of ways in which you can engage. So on October 1st, we're hosting a webinar with um, Lou and Eco Athletes. There are several um, different or, or different athletes who are going to be participating in, in this panel session. We're talking about past progress, current challenges, and future needs from an athlete's perspective. On October 2nd, we're going to be hosting an education session. We've done this uh, several different times. This is a fairly unique initiative. We work really closely with Team Canada and the Olympic Committee, uh, as well as a nonprofit organization that's run by an um, Olympic athlete called Head to Head. And we've actually developed an education uh, session that will uh, engage uh, K to eight years old. And we actually go into schools across Canada and they're able to access this session virtually, and it's all run by Olympic athletes. So really exciting to engage that younger next generation in the conversation, but by highlighting those specific um, Olympic athletes to have those conversations virtually with those with those groups. We've also um, had an outreach from the Sponsorship Marketing Council of Canada, which is an entire sponsorship organization, to do a breakfast forum where it's, it will be our first in-person um, session 
We're hosting it in Toronto this year with a very specific focus on sponsorship, sustainable sponsorship in sports. So really exciting to have our very, very first in-person session happening on October 2nd. I'm gonna move over to the next slide, please. We then also identified last year that we have a whole um, second language here in Canada and it's a national language and one that we are really proud of and one that we would very much like to recognize. So we did, we have never done a French specific um, event up until this year, but as you can see on the third, we're gonna be hosting a webinar with, and I apologize to anybody out there that speaks French, because obviously I don't, but we're really excited to have Vazou Ecosportif um, as our webinar partner for the Thursday event, focusing specifically on the French community and the um, resources that are available through that organization to support the, the sustainability and sport conversation in French. And then finally, we do have this overarching uh, National Green Sports Day Summit that we are continuing to hold on that Friday, um, right before we go into the weekend of events, um, where we will be talking about, again, sustainable sponsorship. We're talking about some really interesting collaborations that are taking place in the Canadian market. We've tried to bring some of our partners together to find solutions for the challenges that we're facing, but doing it in a in a very much a collaborative way. So there's some really interesting projects going on in, in the Canadian space around that. We have a very uh, exciting panel conversation around Paris 24 about the climate challenges and the athletes perspective of that and sort of what was seen there, what might be some you know improvements or adjustments from an athlete's perspective. And then we're really excited that we are also hosting our first film festival. So I'm going to showcase some documentaries that have been created around sustainability in sport. And we're hoping to give access to anybody who's attending that Green Sports Day Summit on that Friday to those uh, those events or those films across along the weekend. So really exciting. There's a lot of information here. Um, I would encourage everybody to take a look at our website. It's called Green Sports Day Canada for more details around um, this specific agenda. If you jump to the next slide, I'm gonna talk about one more piece that's been consistent throughout our Green Sports Day Canada celebrations. So this is a really unique, um, there's two pieces here. So we've got venue go ups and proclamations. So this is a pretty unique approach to Green Sports Day from a national perspective. As Katie mentioned earlier, we actually um, took a look at what the GSA was doing with regard to lighting venues up green across the nation. And we decided that we wanted to do the same thing. So we really saw what was working down in the States and said, hey, we can do that in Canada. And so we have uh, in the last few years had the same similar thing across um, border where we've actually had our venues. And it's not specific to sport venues because there's not a ton of them in Canada, but we've sort of opened them up to like major landmarks across the country. And we've been really successful in obtaining, um, you know, uh, images of very, very green venues across Canada. So we're going to do that again this year throughout the weekend. And then the final piece, which is also an interesting piece, is every year we um, request for proclamations to be signed from municipalities, provinces, and territories across Canada, designating October 6th as Green Sports Day. So we've had a huge outpour of support from municipalities, provinces, and territories. And ideally, in the future, what we'll be able to do is we'll actually be able to take that up to the federal level and have Green Sports Day Canada declared federally as a, a day of celebration. So. It's a great way to engage in those local communities and then take it up to the provincial level. And then we're hoping in, in the next few years, we'll be able to take that up to the federal level. Um, that's everything from my side of things. There's a lot there. I would encourage you to follow us on Instagram, take a look at what we're doing on LinkedIn. And we've got our website listed right there. I can link it in the chat as well. Um, but yes, lots happening from a Green Sports Day Canada perspective. But again, I just wanna reiterate, this is not us reinventing the wheel. We're not creating all this. We're really just bridging the gap and bringing people together who are experts in these different focus areas to celebrate this really important initiative. Thanks, Jill. Uh, so I hope that a lot of you are getting out of this is this, we want this to be a global event. Um, we're hoping to touch every land and, and ocean in the US. Um, and if you want if you're in Canada or or want to get involved in some of these initiatives, I can put Jill's email in the chat so you guys can get a hold of her as well um, and get involved in a lot of these, uh, the days leading up to Green Sports Day. And I'm going to pass it to Evan with EarthDay.org. All right. Hello, everyone. It's fantastic to be here with all of you today. 
My name is Evan Raskin and I lead the national campaign for EarthDay.org. We're the global organizers of Earth Day on April 22nd and supporters of environmental action throughout the year, including Green Sports Day. So we all know that sports can have a massive positive impact on people's lives and the community, but they also have an undeniable impact on the environment as well. The good news is that the social impact of sports is capable of driving meaningful, positive change for the environment, and everyone who is gathered here today is well equipped to be a key driver of that change. Today we'll explore sustainability in sports through the lenses of the Earth Day 2024 and 2025 themes and discuss how we can make a difference on Green Sports Day, Earth Day, and every day. So let's go ahead and jump into the 2024 theme on the next slide. As you can see, this year's theme for Earth Day 2024 is Planet versus Plastics which highlights the ecological and human health impacts of single-use plastics at all levels of the supply chain, from production to proliferation to pollution. And it's no secret that sporting events can generate gargantuan amounts of single-use plastics from concessions, not to mention artificial turf fields, which contribute chemical runoff and spread microplastics that harm the health of both human and wildlife communities alike. So let's put things into perspective. A single NFL game can produce as much as 80,000 pounds of trash. Across an entire season, the league generates 44.6 million pounds of waste. That's equivalent to 107 times the weight of every NFL player combined. Let's take a look at even just the waste generated from cups on the next slide. As you can see, over 2 billion cups are thrown out every year. That's enough to occupy over 85 Empire State Buildings covering every floor. And on the next slide, we can also visualize the same number of 2 billion cups as 4,000 football fields covered in single-use plastic cups. Imagine yourself standing in the center of these football fields. Imagine being surrounded by a sea of plastics that stretches as far as the eye can see. This is the annual collective impact of sports concessions. Surely there's a better way. On the next slide, we'll see that there is some good news, that change is possible. Uh, in 2023, the Super Bowl broke the record that they had previously set the year before by diverting 92.6% of all waste from landfills. Uh, this success stemmed from proper preparations, including investments into waste management infrastructure and a volunteer corps that provided sustainability education to attendees and assistance with sorting waste. And while this is a remarkable step in the right direction, we're encouraging stadiums to take the next step forward. The Super Bowl heavily relied on recycling in order to achieve this statistic. And when successful recycling rates have been as low as 9% in a given year, recycling cannot be the long-term sustainability solution for these institutions. Luckily, reuse models have begun to be implemented at major venues across the country. And this is where we can best learn from the Super Bowl's success. By emulating their investment in audience education and volunteer participation, it's really not hard for a reuse system to be successful in a stadium setting. In fact, it only takes about five uses of a polypropylene or stainless steel um, reusable cup to break even in terms of carbon emissions, and the cost of savings can be immense as well. I recently learned of a small Franciscan charity that saved $50,000 by replacing single-use plastics with reusables for their food service to the local unhoused population. Now, a sports stadium serves far more concessions in even a single game than this charity would serve over their entire year. So just imagine how much a major venue could save by doing the same, all while contributing towards a reduction in single-use plastics, which is so important to achieving the long-term sustainability goals that these institutions should have. When we include education and volunteer participation within that, these systems become incredibly efficient, um, improving the business as a whole. So now let's go ahead and look ahead to Earth Day 2025 on the next slide, where you can see that we have just recently announced our theme, Our Power, Our Planet, which calls for the phasing out of fossil fuels and a tripling of clean energy output by 2030. Today, we're going to look at how the sports industry can leverage our power, all, our planet across all sectors. So let's head on over to the next slide to assess the current state of renewable energy in pro sports. So the Friday night lights, they draw a huge demand for power. And as you can see here, they can draw as much power as 1,700 homes during just a single pro game. That's 10 megawatts of energy. Uh, the good news is that we've seen a shift in the economic renewables over the last decade, with solar becoming 10 times more affordable in just the last decade alone. 
At this point, renewable energy is now, broadly speaking, the most affordable form of electricity, and pro sports are taking advantage of the savings. The Philadelphia Eagles, for example, are expected to save over $60 million in energy costs over the next 20 years due to the installation of 11,000 solar panels. And the Seattle Seahawks have already seen their utility costs drop by 21% from their investments in solar panels and energy efficient lighting. And as they continue to expand solar, we hope to see that grow even more. So far, about 47 major league sports teams, about one third of US stadiums have access to renewable energy now. Through our power, our planet, we hope to advocate for the number of stadiums and leagues to expand by hopefully triple that number. By 2030, maybe we'll see more than 100, 150 major league teams um, participate with solar. There is a great opportunity here for leagues to make a difference and we're already seeing some drive the change. On the next slide, we'll look over two organizations in particular that we've had the chance to sit down with and do a deep dive on their renewable energy and climate policies. We recently spoke with the NBA, uh, who has been pursuing energy efficiency um, across all sectors of their business. So far, they have 10 venues that are LEED certified. And in the 2022 to 2023 season, uh, through smart travel plans, they were able to save over 50,000 50, miles uh, by scheduling games so that athletes never have to travel that far to get to their next game. We also recently sat down with members of the IOC and the Paris Olympics to discuss how they were able to achieve one of the greenest Olympics that we've seen so far. Um, some key takeaways that I took from our conversation is that uh, low carbon concessions can make a big difference uh, in terms of food service. Not only are we looking at ways of reducing single use plastics, um, but the Paris Olympics chose to serve meals that are lower carbon emissions than the typical French meal, um, while also making sure to focus on composting so that we can cut out so many wasteful carbon emissions just from simple inefficiency. 95% um, of the venues were reused or temporary, meaning that the huge carbon costs of construction were slashed. And of course, an emphasis on public transportation was also key uh, to make sure that attendees weren't spending lots of carbon emission and gridlock traffic from so many people being in Paris at the same time. Investments were made into improving both the public transportation metro system, while also ensuring that there were abundant bicycle options for attendees to be able to get to the game um, using their own power. So let's take a look at how both of these Earth Day themes contribute towards a greater vision of how we can come together on Earth Day. Why does this all matter for Earth Day? Why does this all matter for Green Sports Day? And why is such an immense amount of power um, being put behind the sports industry as a key player in the environmental movement? And that's really because sports rely on a healthy environment. From ski mountains to surf beaches to local pickup games in the park, athletes and fans alike depend on clean air, water, land, and climate in order to do what they love and to have a happy and healthy life. So it's only fitting that the sports community takes the lead in protecting the environment and making these activities possible in the first place. And here's the reality. Sports create a powerful shared identity and people are more likely to follow their favorite team than scientific research. In fact, 20% of adults follow science while over 80% follow sports. This creates a huge opportunity for sports to bridge the gap. So the sports industry has the unique opportunity to lead by example and inspire millions. Earth Day provides a coordinated opportunity for the sports industry to unite with a global cross-sector movement, as does Green Sports Day. It's ideal for, in these moments, for the industry to showcase their commitment to the environmental leadership that they have and demonstrate to fans how they too can be part of how we can win the game. This ultimately fosters a culture where fans are compelled to volunteer for Earth Day for Green Sports Day and every day, uh, they're compelled to make more sustainable choices and to stand united with their favorite players and teams and a shared commitment to restore our earth. Now, I'd love to connect with each and every one of you to discuss how our platform can help feature your environmental leadership on Green Sports Day, Earth Day, and beyond. Uh, as Green Sports Alliance put it, in fact, climate action is a team sport, and we want to have you on the starting lineup. So please feel free to reach out to me at any of the listed contact points, and I'm happy to answer any questions you may have, um, both now on the webinar and later. Thank you very much. 
Thank you, Evan. That was very well said. Uh, shout out to the Eagles and the Seahawks. You guys are doing great in this industry, both of which are on our board, actually, um, really making waves in this industry. Um, I'm going to send you guys the link if you want to join Green Sports Day uh, with us. We will have the toolkit coming out shortly. But if you want to start getting involved and planning what you're going to do, uh, there are three pillows on there. The ones that we uh, that Brianna had talked about earlier. Um, there are some questions in here, like what's going on in Las Vegas, what's going on in Utah. So uh, this is a good way to start to reach out to folks that are in your uh, geographic location. And if you need some extra help, you can always reach out to us. We are very well connected when it comes to um each side of the US or, or even the world. Um, and I'm gonna pass it to Jenna uh, with Ocean Conservancy. Thank you and hello everyone. I'm Jenna from the Ocean Conservancy and I am, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm excited to be here with the Green Sports Alliance to talk a little bit about our new partnership in time for Green Sports Day. But first I wanna talk about how our ocean connects to all of us and how sports play a vital role in protecting it. The ocean covers 70% of the Earth's surface. It holds 97% of the planet's water. It generates 50% of the oxygen we need to breathe. The ocean is truly the lungs of our planet and our largest carbon sink, absorbing 25% of carbon emissions, and it captures 90% of the excess heat that warms our planet. The ocean is a life support system. Whether you live by the coast or far inland, the ocean plays a critical role in your lives and your organization's lives. This means that the ocean plays a critical role in protecting all the places that we play. It's the grass on our fields, the mountains we climb, the waves we swim in. The ocean provides every second breath our athletes take. So at Ocean Conservancy, like our friends at Earth Day, we know that sport has the power to inspire millions to take action. And that's why we at Ocean Conservancy are joining forces with the Green Sports Alliance and look forward to working with you and your organizations that are committed to making a difference when it comes to our very green and blue planet. So I'm so grateful for the work. I know many of you have been um, doing a ton already and that the Green Sports Day is a testament to the power of sport that, to advance sustainability. So we're looking forward to speaking with anyone and any of your organizations um, that are interested in protecting all the places we play and all of the places that protect them, including our ocean. So we'd love to help you uh, make the ocean a bigger priority in your environmental actions, both operationally and through fan engagement. So please feel free to get in touch with me or any of the GSA team members to ensure a healthy ocean, a healthy field, and a healthy place to play for future generations. Thanks so much. It's great to be a part of this really incredible organization, and I'm thrilled to be here on time for Green Sports Day. Thank you so much, Jenna. Um, all of their emails are in the chat if you want to get a hold of them to start to activate for Green Sports Day. Um, I didn't introduce Brianna and Taylor as our newest team members uh, for the Green Sports Alliance. Um, I put Brianna's email in the chat as well. Uh, if you're looking for marketing and comms, same with Taylor. Um, I'll, I'll put her email in the chat as well, but I'm going to pass it to Taylor to do some fun and games. <laughs> Yeah. So hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Taylor Sweet. I am new to GSA, just like Katie said. Uh, me and Bree are new to the marketing team, but we kind of wanted to do a little bit of a trivia to have to help everybody think of some ways that they can be involved. So the first question that we have, and you can drop your answer into the chat, is what percentage of plastic is actually recycled in the United States as of 2024? So you should have had a poll pop up on your screen. If you want to just give that just a quick click and we'll give it about another like 15, 10 seconds and then we'll close that out. So we'll give it another 10 seconds. Just start playing Jeopardy music. Okay. 
So the answer to that question is 9%. And as you can see, um, everybody, for the most part, everybody got guessed about 9%. So it is correct. It was up from um, 5% last year. So we have seen a bit of an increase, which is great. That's what we want. Um, moving on to the next question. What are the six R's? And so when you think of R's, you know, something that we've been educated on for most of our life is I'll give it a little bit of a hint, uh, is reduce and reuse. And so there are a couple other ones that we want you to be creative of and think about. So go ahead and just type in one word, or you can do all six if you want, but think about like reduce, reuse, something, 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 something. This one might totally what we really want. It's okay. I would say what we really want to focus on with these is using these as kind of like a guiding tool for when you're thinking about what you're, what you kind of want to activate on in terms of impacting the community. So, you know, if somebody, we can, what we can we reduce in terms of our carbon footprint, things like that. Or if we, and recycling is a part of like a big part of it, things like that. So use this as a creative tool when you're going out and thinking about what you can do for Green Sports Day. This is a good way to connect back to the mission of Green Sports Day. We can leave it up for about like 10 more seconds. No, no cheating. No cheating, no Google. Or chat GPT now. There's a lot of different R's out there, is what we've realized. All right, 10 more seconds. All right, we're going to end it. Is there a way to see the answers? I thought that you could see them. No, <laughs> no, I cannot. But everybody answered. So that was great. Okay. Can you there see we these? Go. I can see those. Okay. So great. So yeah. Oh, redesign. That's a good one. I really like that one. Re reduce, reuse, recycle, regenerate. That's a really good one. Really like that. Re earth. That one stands out to me. Love that recover rethink really like that one reject that's a good one rot rot yep Solid. <laughs> i like that these are really good answers but yeah think about these when you're going through green sports day and you're planning for green sports day this is a really good tool to think back to the message and the purpose of green sports day and then our last question is kind of more of a personal question but what is an effort that you can make in your life as a change for Green Sports Day this year? So obviously like Green Sports Day is about making an impact on sports, but we wanna encourage you to live and breathe these values as well. You know, it's one thing when we talk about it, but it's another thing when we do it ourselves. So we obviously wanna encourage you to take the action yourself. So what is something that you would do personally to make an impact this year? Like something that I've tried to been practice practicing for the last couple of years is taking shorter showers. Uh, I'm in California. We've been in a drought for, I don't know, 15 years or so. So it's very embedded in me and my community that running water is uh, problematic, um, running your sprinklers, et cetera. So taking shorter showers has been one of mine. This might take I know something for me and my roommate, we also live in California. Something that we actually started with our apartment complex is we actually do compost now. So we take all of our food scraps and we have a little mini garden that we have outside and we take all of our food scraps and we make compost with it. So that's something that we started when we moved in that we're really excited about. Do any of our panelists have uh, something that they've been practicing or one of their goals? Yeah, definitely. Um, living in Vancouver, Canada, this is a hot topic up here, but reducing single use plastic usage. So I'm sure lots of people have heard of the, I think it's called like the Mason jar challenge, 
where you put a little mason jar somewhere where you can see it every day and you only put your single use plastic that is going to end up in the landfill in that jar and you want to make sure that it's smaller and smaller and smaller as you go. Um, I always really like that one. I try to do that like once a year. So maybe I'll do that for a uh, green sports day. And then I'd say another piece that I'm really thinking about a lot more, and this is a bit more challenging, but I travel for work. So my, my hands are kind of tied a little bit with some of the, the, you know, admissions that I have to be a part of, which I really don't like. So really being aware of my personal footprint and doing things that I can, um, tangibly and accessibly participate in that would help reduce my admissions um, due to my travel. So being really well aware of that. Yeah, awesome. Gil, I really liked your example of the mason jar challenge. And that's something I want to aspire to as well. I know I spent a, an entire year once saving every piece of plastic film that I use, like every wrapper and bag. Um, and it, it was, uh, to the best of my efforts, it was still a very full cabinet in my kitchen at the end of that year. So I think it would be great to see where else we can continue to make those reductions. But I think a lot of it also comes from advocacy as well. And that's something I've been trying to engage more in. And a big part of what I have planned for Earth Day, we want to create opportunities for folks to connect with their local elected officials and show that when we're individually pursuing sustainability, we would also like to see it done institutionally and societally as well. And I hope that we can all work together to create more of those opportunities. 100%. Katie, can you reveal some of the answers maybe all right remembering to bring my own to go containers with me that's a good one that's not something i had thought of before that's a good one more plant forward food vegan options start composting recycling composting public transportation at sporting events that's something san diego is actually very good about we have the trolley here in san diego and a lot of people use that to go to snapdragon which is really, really cool. Uh, so we're gonna try to do the first uh, disposing correctly. Yes, engage in youth sports and carpooling. Yeah, that's a big one. Youth sports are a huge part of everything in our society. So carpooling is a big one. Learn about initiatives with local sports teams. Yep. And a lot of the local sports teams do have initiatives to be more involved in sustainable efforts. So like getting involved with them is very important. Go shopping. Yeah, these are great. So yeah, you know, rethink, go back and rethink about those R's and go back to the purpose statement of Green Sports Day. Those are, those are the things that we want to kind of put forward um, about, you know, utilizing those tools for Green Sports Day and really kind of initiate that creative ability for you to think about. So we would love to hear what anybody is doing for Green Sports Day. If you want to drop it in the chat or if you have questions about Green Sports Day, now is the time to ask. We're here, we're open to hearing what you have planned, or if you have questions about anything, feel free to put it in the chat. We're here to help out. And last but not least. <laughs> and last but not least, um, in a couple of days, we are hosting our Kansas City Symposium in Kansas City, Missouri. Um, there are a couple spots left. So if you're interested in attending or will be in the area, go ahead and scan that QR code and register. Um, We're going to hear from amazing speakers. It's a one day event, but we are also attending the Casey Currents um, game that's happening on the 20th. So I believe it's on a Thursday and we're staying for the game on the 20th. If you would like to attend with us. But yeah, scan that QR code. You were hearing from some really amazing people from the Chiefs, the Royals, the Hornets. Golden State Warriors, a lot of cool people are going to be there. Great networking opportunity as well. Um, we have a, a question from a, an attendee, Meredith Smith. I'm going to allow you to talk so you can now ask your question. Hi, you guys. This is actually not a question, but this was all super inspiring. So thank you for your time. Um, I was just going to say that we at NC State, we are doing a sorting day on October 6th, which I believe that is Green Sports Day, right? Yeah. Yeah. So yes. um, we're bringing Zero Waste, uh, our program, back to NC State football games. And in honor of our sustainability game on October 5th, we're hosting a sorting day and recruiting volunteers to sort all of the in-stadium waste and increase our diversion. And the I'm super excited about that. So I'll definitely tag you guys in some of our social media posts um, so that you can reshare. That would be awesome. 
Yeah, for sure. That's great. I love to hear that. I'm from North Carolina, so love to hear that NC State is participating in this. Oh, nice. Where from? I'm from right outside Charlotte. Uh, I'm in uh, Concord, North Carolina. No way. That's where I was born and raised. Oh, my gosh. That's crazy. Oh, my gosh. That is crazy. I'll have to connect <laughs> with you later. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Thank you guys again. No problem. We have another question from Rebecca Guinea, I think it is, uh, working in the promo product and gifting industry in sports, um, which is uh, a beast to tackle. So uh, Rebecca, if you're okay with it, I'll allow you to talk and you can uh, ask your question live. If you're still here, I believe. Yes, I am here. Thank you so much. Yeah. Hey, Rebecca. Hey, um, how are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you. And thank you, everyone um, on the call today. This has been really amazing and so inspiring. Um, I'm grateful for everything everyone is doing. It takes, you know, a village, <laughs> um, to say the least. So um, I work in the promo product industry, obviously, there's um, a lot of gifting and swag within the sports world. And so um, I'm just wondering how I can get more involved with um, GSA or anyone else on the call today. Um, sustainability is a passion of mine. I was born and raised in Santa Cruz, California. So kind of on the coast, but also in a redwood forest. And so um, just, uh, you know, it's a really beautiful area, very special. Um, so sustainability is near and dear to my heart and um, the products that we use daily are, um, you know, uh, have a big impact on our planet. And so I truly believe in being able to change um, what we're doing, what we're giving away and how that can be a vehicle to, um, you know, show people what's possible. You know, 20 percent of of people follow science and 80% of people follow sports, then I think there's a lot that we can do there to showcase what we can do with with products and and um, how we can use that to help save the planet. Definitely. Um, we are always looking to get connected with folks in your industry. So cool. I um, I have your email and I will email you offline and we can see what we can put together because I know there are many, many sports teams that ask about this all the time. So Great. hopefully we can uh, collaborate and make it a little bit more sustainable. <laughs> yes. Amazing. Thank you so much. No problem. Good to meet you, Rebecca. Likewise. And we have another hand raised. Becca Heights, I think it is. I'm going to allow you to talk. Are you there, Becca? All right, maybe she she missed it. Um, well, if anyone else has any more questions, I put all of our emails in the chat. So uh, feel free to reach out to any of us with any questions. Uh, if you're going to Kansas City, we hope to see you there. I know uh, Jill was talking a lot about renewable energies. This is a really good place to learn about them if you're looking to get involved in that space. Um, and yeah, we hope you... Had a good time and Green Sports Day is October 6th. You have roughly three weeks to plan, but we at the Green Sports Alliance, we say uh, every day is Green Sports Day. So if it's not the month of October, uh, we're, we're willing to activate year round. So get a hold of us. We'd love to hear from you and we hope you enjoy your week. Thanks, everyone.